All right, in this video we're going to quickly talk about uh, oscilloscope bandwidth, what we mean by it, and how to quickly measure it, not in a super calibrated way, but just uh, to make sure that you know, it kind of meets its specifications generally. So the scope we're going to be using is this uh, 100 megahertz uh, dual channel scope, a cell Tektronix 465B, very popular scope. And again, it's got 100 megahertz of vertical bandwidth. And when we talk about vertical bandwidth, or bandwidth of a scope, we're really referring to the frequency response of the vertical channels. Okay, obviously they don't have infinite bandwidth, they're going to have some, at, at some frequency, the response starts to roll off. Okay, can't keep up with the signal ampl amplitude anymore. For a 100 megahertz scope, what that means is, as the input frequency reaches 100 megahertz, the response you see on the screen will be no more than 3 dB lower than the true amplitude being applied at the input. Okay, it's going to be down, and it could be down as, as much as 3 dB, but no more than 3 dB. Okay, so it's the, essentially the, you know, low-pass corner, okay, or cutoff frequency. But it by no means means that you can't use the, the scope above 100 megahertz. You certainly could. It's just that the amplitude won't be at the full amplitude of the signal. And even at 100 megahertz, it won't be at full amplitude. So uh, the way we can go quickly measure that is uh, I've got a signal coming in from this RF signal generator up here. Okay, right now it's, it's sitting at one megahertz at zero dBm. Okay, and I've got that RF signal terminated through a, a 50 ohm through terminator because this scope doesn't have the ability of putting a 50 ohm termination at the input like some of the wider bandwidth scopes do. So this properly terminates the RF signal and that's what I've got going into uh, the scope here. And we're looking at it here on the scope screen. So what I like to do is I like to turn the uh, sweep speed down so that I get a nice fat band, okay, not necessarily being able to see any individual cycle. And that makes it really easy to see the amplitude because I can just kind of you know, look at the, the width of the bands here. And then what I'll do is I'll adjust the uh, uh, variable volts per division until I get an even number of divisions here. So what I like to do is, in this case, I'm going to do about six divisions, which will be right about there. Okay, if we look carefully, we can see we're extending you know, six divisions on the screen, plus or minus three around center, okay? So the 3 dB point, or the half power point, is also the point where the voltage response is down to 70.7%, .7 or one over square root of two of full amplitude, okay? And what that corresponds to, if I've got six divisions here, um, I can basically calculate that out, and what that means, I'm gonna have basically about four and a quarter divisions, or 4.24, uh, divisions okay at at 3 dB down so what I can do is just adjust the frequency of the signal generator until that response goes down to 4.24 divisions okay so we'll go make some measurements so right now I've got the, uh, the signal generator at 1 megahertz what I'm going to do is start cranking that up in, in uh, 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 to the frequency and as I do that we can actually see the amplitude now start to drop okay so if we go up to, let's go right to say 100 megahertz to start with, okay? So now I've got the signal generator here at uh, 100 megahertz. And if we take a look at the scope, okay, where are we? So if I kind of adjust the offset here, okay, I can see I'm at about 1, 2, 3, 4. And I would call that probably about 4.7, okay? Maybe 4.7 divisions or so. So how far down is that? Okay, so 4.7 divisions, I'm just doing this on a calculator here real quick. 4.7 divisions out of 6, okay, and I take uh, the log of that times 20, okay, that says that I'm down 2 dB, 2.1 dB. So, so certainly I'm not down by 3 dB yet, so I've certainly met my uh, 100 megahertz bandwidth spec uh, according to, you know, the, measure, the 100 megahertz signal in here, I'm only down about 2 dB. So let's go down until I get to that 3 dB point and see where the bandwidth of the scope actually is. So I'm going to keep cranking this up here, and it's right about here, I believe. And let's adjust, uh, let's adjust my vertical position here so I can easily count the divisions. And if I look here, uh, let's see, if I kind of adjust that right about so, and right about there. So let's see, that's about 4 and... Actually, just a little under 4.2. Let me crank this a, a little bit more. There we go. So there's probably the 4.24 divisions. It's probably just a little bit off from there, but that's pretty close. Okay. That's probably about my 4.24 divisions. And where am I? I'm at a 117 megahertz. So, uh, so this particular channel, 
is down 3 dB at 117 megahertz, and that exceeds the 100 megahertz bandwidth. So uh, that kind of verifies that. Now I can do that on the other channel. Uh, but, but as you can see, there's still certainly a usable signal here. If I go crank the speed up on the scope, turn my 10x mag on here, let me turn the intensity up here a little bit, I still got a pretty clean signal here to go look at and go work with, right? But uh, even if I turn the, uh, the, the frequency up even more, I'm just turning the frequency up even more here, and uh, let's uh, give myself a little more sensitivity. Maybe play with my triggering a little bit here, okay? So there's, I've got a, a signal I can actually read and look at. There's that, it's at 159 megahertz. Let's see what happens even up all the way up to, let's go to say 200 megahertz. Double the bandwidth of the scope, okay? So there I'm at 200 megahertz. Let's crank the speed up here on the scope and uh, let's play with triggering. So there I've even got a signal at 200 megahertz as vis you know, visible on this scope which is rated to 100 megahertz. So certainly the bandwidth of the scope doesn't necessarily mean that the scope just quits above that frequency. It just means that the response is going to be down. Now I'm way down here. I had to crank crank up the uh, the uh, crank down the volts per division in order to see the signal, but I can still see that it's there. And if the whole idea is for you to just verify that a signal's still present, you're not really going to measure the full amplitude, but you want to see that something's there. Uh, you certainly can, in many cases, use your analog scopes beyond what their rated bandwidth is. The things that will start to give up the ghost are the trigger circuits. Uh, they may not respond as well at the high frequencies. And then on the digital scopes, you've got to start worrying about things like aliasing and things like that because you've got a sample rate to contend with. But the analog scopes are a little bit simpler from that standpoint in that, uh, in many cases, they'll still do respond and you know uh, reasonably well to signals that uh, exceed the bandwidth limitation of the scope uh, by a pretty far margin, in this case 2x. So yeah, I hope you learned a little something about scope bandwidth and uh, how you measure that and uh, a quick example here on this 465.